Okay, I wanted to come up with something that we could do um, in, in a final discussion point. And I thought for fall camp, a stock report segment was appropriate. And so what we're going to do is we're each going to give our stock ups right now. And then we're going to close with, we're, we're not going to say stock down, but we're going to say waiting to buy. Um, so starting out first, my stock up as we kind of head into fall camp is definitely Micah Mazuka. And I say that, guys, because during fall uh, spring ball, you just didn't know. It didn't seem like he was in a really good place, that he wasn't a good fit. Well, it's because rules said that. I mean, yeah, the head coach said that. And, you know, now as we sit here with, with training camp starting, there's the big man. He definitely looks like he's been a very valuable addition and could end up being one of their better linemen. And he's definitely as experienced as any lineman on this team right now. Yeah. And you just wonder sometimes with these veteran players, if they get into spring ball and they're like, okay, we got to do the spring ball thing again. You know, you saw a rule rules approach with some of the veterans on this team that were already on the team. They didn't have to do all that much. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe it was with Mazuka, it could have been some of that. Like, what am I doing? You know, and then and then when it gets starts getting real, he turns it on. I think that's maybe what you're looking at here. The reason we can do this, some people, guys, will just a quick interlude, will look at us and go, Why are you doing stock up and holding off or whatever we're calling it right now? Camp hasn't even started. Well, we can do it because college football now they have OTAs and they've ramped. I mean, I've my impression is they've ramped it up. I mean, you can, I mean, it's it's like not year round, but summer's pretty important. Go ahead, Rob. All right, Robin, who do you have? What's your stock up? I'm going to go a little bit further down the offensive line to the other potential guard spot. And I'm going to say Justin Evans. Now he's in a tight competition with Henry Lutovsky and Mazuka for that matter for what to to claim one of those starting and guards Turner Corcoran even Corcoran that yes that's certainly a potential as well but just based off what players have said about Justin Evans over the last couple of weeks has caught my attention it started with Ty Robinson talking about him at Big Ten media days where he just talked about they was just asking kind of a general question who's someone on the offensive line that has jumped out to you in workouts like who, who's tough to go against he, he said Evans unprompted and just talked about how physical, strong he is. And when he gets a hold of you, you're not getting away. And then today, or I guess this week, Nash Hutmacher said the same thing. So you're talking about two of Nebraska's most veteran interior defensive linemen or just defensive linemen that have mentioned him by name when asked that general question of who has impressed you on the offensive line. That, to me, is extremely notable. And I think that's a separator at this point in camp. New Jersey. New Jersey street fighter. I mean, mm -hmm. the Riolas love him. Dominic loves him. I mean... Donovan, I mean, this is a Donovan guy because it, because there's, he's a street fighter. Mm -hmm. You guys watch football. I'm amazed. It just looks like every play is a street fight in, in the interior, mm -hmm. and he can do it. He can do it. All right, Sip, who do you got? Oh, this will surprise you. Um, I got a surprising name <laughs> for you, someone we don't talk about. I mean, who could that be? Yeah, we just don't talk about him very much. <laughs> um <laughs> Have you ever heard of Carter Nelson? Who? Oh my gosh! <laughs> I don't think anybody right now is listening. I mean, stock is soaring. Uh, stock is soaring. It's incredible. Well, we're talking about it because Matt Rule in Indianapolis said his stock is soaring, basically. And Marcus Satterfield mm -hmm. today, yeah, said that you. Um, well, in, in Satterfield, you know what? On our trip to Texas, made it pretty clear that they're going to do whatever they can to get him on the field. That's when I started getting excited. Actually, that was early June. And then rules comments come in late July. And now a little more talk about Carter today. So they're playing him at this position called F. F is in Frank. It's the F position. So it's a, it's a slot split out tight end. Fedoni will play F sometimes too. Um, but th they're working him in they're, He's He's going to, he's going to play for Nebraska this year. It's clear. They're getting him ready to play, which is mm -hmm. smart because he's 6'4", 230, 235. He runs a four five forty, And he's lift, lifting weights for the first time. And as we saw in Hawaii, he has some serious dog in him. Okay, next part of the segment, waiting to buy. These are things that we aren't really ready to buy in on. And I'm going to take the easy, low-hanging fruit of the week, kicker. I mean, I, oh, I think boy. the oh. kicker position for Nebraska, you know, just not knowing Alvano's durability and just how much we've kind of been plagued at the kicker position at Nebraska really since Pat Smith. 
Yeah. Yeah. And like you guys have mentioned, what's that series they have on Twitter? On chasing X? three. Chasing three. And why is it chasing three? Because they lost how many games by three points? Several. Several. Three or four. <laughs> right. So, that, yeah. I don't. God, I don't want this Alvano story to define the first few weeks of camp, but it almost feels like today we're heading down that road, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's a danger. Well, it was already a question, and now it's an even bigger question right now because he's not playing. He's not practicing. So, yes, to be determined on that one in a major way. For me, I'm going to go at running back, Gabe Irvin Jr., and I think just because he's a guy that I think when healthy has – probably the the total package of everything that you want in a running back um, as anybody in that room problem is you just can't stay healthy and so just the availability aspect with him and how he's coming back off a season ending injury you just don't know and so while the potential is there for him to take that starting running back job and run with it all year long uh i need to see it before i I can believe it just because he just hasn't shown the durability to to get to that point where he is your every down workhorse and the third one where we're in kind of a holding pattern is the starting corner spot opposite Tommy Hill. We don't, we just don't know uh, how that's going to shake out right now. Sierra Wright is someone you'd look at. Marquise Buford, Jeremiah Charles. I mean, I still have a hard time just saying Jeremiah Charles. Why is that, Sean? Because he hasn't played a lot of football. Redshirt freshman. And he, he only played one year of high school football. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I got you. I, no, Freak I'm, of an athlete, though. Freak of an athlete. Unbelievable athlete. athlete. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I mean, I would never. I'm not. I, I'm not in the business of writing anybody off. So maybe if you watch practice, you'd have a different, you'd have a different thought on. It. But I totally agree with you. It seems, it seems kind of scary to do it. We also didn't mention Malcolm Hartzog, who they they have thrust into that conversation. They, the coaches, those are your principals. Dwight Boodle, I think you'd put in there too. But Dwight Boodle would be on the periphery probably compared to the other guy. How many guys will they play early though? Because I think early in the season. Uh, especially UTEP and Northern Iowa, there could be some opportunities mm -hmm. to play more players. There could. Also, you got to keep in mind what Matt Rule said about Bly Hill, mm -hmm. which he was the starter. Blew out, not blew out, but hurt his, didn't blow it out. Hurt no, he his knee not. in the spring game. Um, but is ahead of schedule yeah. and will br be practicing by the end of the month. Yeah, I think, mid, I think he said he's first couple weeks of camp. He'll probably be out. So practicing by the end of the so month. So he'll be, he'll be back on the field before the opener. Which suggests to me September, which, which by the way, I have thought all along. I thought that when Rule first portrayed it and the way he talked about it, I thought by end of September, Bly Hill will be out there. Mm -hmm. The question is, is it the former Bly Hill? Right. You know, that's what we don't right. know.